credentials from innocent members of the public. Authorities say the site had 80 million sets of digital fingerprints for sale, letting fraudsters pay less than a dollar to access passwords for Facebook, PayPal, Netflix, Amazon, and eBay. And that allowed them to log into bank and shopping accounts. Anyone searching the site now will know it's been seized in a crackdown dubbed Operation Cookie Monster. That references computer cookies Genesis was selling to help criminals impersonate genuine users. We now want criminals to be afraid that we have their credentials, and they should be. Uh, and people today are getting a knock on their door very early in the morning. Police arrested nearly 120 alleged scammers, some of them in the U.S., and investigations are continuing. To avoid becoming a victim of fraud, experts suggest taking software updates on your phones and computers and choosing strong passwords and, when possible, using two-factor authentication, a security system that sends a text message with a one-time code before you can actually log in. Amy Johnson, KCAL News. New information now about a wild police chase that weaved through city streets late last night. Assignment editor Mike Rogers is at the desk. Mike, you were here last night for that pursuit, and you've been trying to get some information from officials today. So what have you learned? Yeah, Serena Ross, this was a pretty quick one. It was went on for about an hour and uh, fast speeds through city streets. We'll show you that video. It pretty much isolated to one area, the Pico Union area. Uh, LAPD was in pursuit of this last night. All we knew is a suspect that was wanted for some type of felony. Well, tonight we know uh, the person was wanted for robbery. We also know that they have an extensive criminal history and were wanted for uh, parole violations. So you can see here, sparks started to fly when the car uh, had its tires spiked by officers. I want to tell you about the suspect. My sources have been able to confirm with me uh, that the suspect was a 36-year-old. We'll show you some of his criminal history here on the screen. Uh, he was arrested, had several previous arrests. Uh, March 2023, a parole violation. November 2021, possession of a firearm by a prohibited person uh, because because he is a felony. In May 2020, he was arrested for robbery. February 2019, a concealed firearm. We'll show you the next set of information here where uh, we'll show you what he was actually sentenced to for those. That March case was still pending because it was so recent. But in November, he was sentenced to 32 months in prison. Uh, in May, 310 days in jail of 2020. And in February 2019, 309 days in jail. So this person does have an extensive criminal history. We were working right now with uh, the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation to get us some information on his time in custody and if he served that full sentence. But as we come back out here to the desk, I can tell you this was LAPD's gang and narcotics division that was chasing this guy uh, in conjunction with the FBI. I spoke with the FBI tonight. They did tell me that they were part of a task force with the LAPD uh, that wanted this guy, but they do say he has not been arrested on any federal charges or federal cases, uh, simply that they were involved in the task force that was looking for this person. So we're still going to continue to get some more information, but at least we know uh, who this guy was, some of his background, and we're trying to figure out exactly what that robbery was about. That's what precipitated this whole thing. So if we get that information, we'll be sure to let you guys know. All right. Thanks a lot, Mike. 16 states have banned a health insurance practice called copay accumulators, but it's still legal here in California and it can cost the chronically ill thousands of dollars every year. On your side's Christine Lazar has that story. A regulation adopted during the Trump administration made copay accumulators legal unless a state decides to ban them. And a bill introduced just last month in Sacramento aims to do just that. Alyssa Dykstra was diagnosed with juvenile arthritis as a toddler. The autoimmune disorder causes painful inflamed joints and fatigue. And her daily medication costs upwards of $11,000 a month. So for me, I'm very thankful that I do have insurance that makes this more reasonable. She is responsible for closer to 3000 for a 28 day supply, still way beyond the price most Americans can afford. That's why drug companies have assistance programs for the chronically ill. Because they have contracted rates that they will get money from the insurance policy, they say, don't worry about your share. We'll take what the company is giving us and we're going to give you this coupon that would kind of subsidize your out-of-pocket share. But here in California, insurance companies are allowed something called a copay accumulator. Critics say it's a way for insurance companies to make even more money off the priciest of prescription drugs. And the way they did that is that they said to the consumer that you can't use the copay assistance card to meet your annual deductible. 
So we all know our annual deductible is the amount we have to pay out of pocket before.